Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Service Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's tuning in through our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. Have a really good treat for you all today, pun intended there. We're excited to welcome Ralph Rowe to our program today. Ralph is someone who's made a name for himself in music, but also in life, the way he's been able to really be able to dance to the beat of his own drum and to be able to make a difference in the meantime. This year, he's doing a lot of great things, including being able to expand on his passion, the Soul Snacks Cookie Company. We'll talk to Ralph not only about that, but also let you all know where you can go for more information and to stay connected with him. Ralph, thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Rep, I was when I was prepping for this segment with you, I was uh, looking at your, your Twitter in particular. Twitter is one of my favorite platforms. And you were talking about the decades that you have been able to spend in music and the success there. What has this reflection been like for you, Ralph, to not only to look at what you've been able to do in music, but just in your life? Um, it's It's been an amazing journey. And um, being a musician is a very special um uh, career choice. Um, when I started playing back in the day, after right after high school, my mother was very shocked that I made a career choice to be a musician when I was all prepped and ready to go to, um, to school to be an engineer like my brother. My brother's a mechanical engineer. And um, I got skipped a year in school. I was a pretty nerdy kid from the project. But... Um, the music just was in my blood. It just was a part of me that just made me very happy. And my mother told when I told her about my career choice, she she just looked at me and said, I think you lost your mind. But mm-hmm. um, I did make a name for myself, and it, it took work. Like, like most people in any industry, you have to cater to the craft uh, to the point that you're willing to die for it. And when I first became a musician, I knew that there was no turning back. There was no plan B, which is something that uh, that I um, definitely live by. Um, and I love being a musician. I love entertaining people. I love the art form. Uh, and it's a special, it's a special career. It's a special choice. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And and I think with, with that being said, Ralph, I mean, music it has so many different opportunities, right? I mean, when your passion for it comes through, but what has it been like for you to see the healing that comes from it? Not just for you as the artist, but also for the ones who are able to to listen to you and to benefit from it. Well, honestly, the reason why I chose music is because I saw the effect that playing music, what it does and what it has on on people. And I love love doing that. I've been a kid... Yeah, uh, that's always loved helping people and and helping uh, uh, the, the folks around me to just have uh, a pleasant time or do better. So that effect that music has on a person is global. Um, I've worked for uh, a, a Japanese superstar for over twenty years, and there was an interpreter that traveled with us because uh, many of the band members uh, didn't speak Japanese, and many of the uh, other people didn't speak English, but when we started playing music together, it was a very well spoken language, and that effect that it has on people uh, to to entertain is a very very beautiful beautiful feeling. Very, it's amazing. It really is. I think that is it. And, and again, you've been able to gain fans along the way. But also you've done more than that, Ralph. You have inspired others. Talk to us about that. Because outside of being an entertainer, you also have taken on the role of educator. Why was that important for you through your master class to be able to share what you have learned with others? When I first started playing, um, my teacher was the radio. I learned from listening to different artists, mostly, you know, I love Motown, so I would play all of the Motown moves from, you know, I didn't I didn't even know who they were at the time. 
but now the, you know the Funk Brothers are legends in in their music, and uh, those were my teachings. But when I really got into teaching, is after um, I had a few mentors. The first one was a gentleman named Ricky Williams in my in my neighborhood, who allowed me to go to his house and listen to him play. He never allowed anyone to go to the to play. Now Ricky. Uh, has mastered many instruments, and his main instrument is not drums, it's actually keyboards, but um, him allowing me in that room, I just absorbed his energy on many different levels, and then my next teacher that actually taught me the technical side, the rudimental side of drumming was another guy named Ricky Mangum, and his his patience and his style of teaching just kind of... Uh, got into my blood, and I wanted to be able to teach. And the, the last person at that particular time was a gentleman named Bobby Craig. Bobby Craig has taught some of the most amazing drummers uh, around the world as far as technical, rudimental drumming. And his style of teaching is, is when I go out to teach, my thing is not so much to go out and teach and show people how to do tricks. My goal is to make people see themselves in a better light to get out of their own way, to be able to play whatever instrument that they're playing better, the um, that that particular style of motivating, and it's it, it's been good for me. I've had a chance to teach all around the world, uh, from Africa to uh, all parts of Europe and Asia. So uh, that give back part has always been important to me. From the kids in my neighborhood where I grew up in Bronx, <clears throat> Bronx with the houses to, you know, professionals that uh, are just looking for a different approach to their instrument. So teaching, I will never stop teaching. That's something that I will always do. I want to ask you about uh, about how you've been able to stay grounded, Ralph, because when people hear the name Ralph Roll, of course, you know, they, they know the successes. Uh, how have you not been defined by that? Because I think there are so many people out there who – you know, haven't done nearly what you've been able to do sometimes, and, and things kind of take them over. How have you been able to stay grounded and stay focused, even in the face of all the success you've had? Um, one of the biggest things, I would have to attribute that to my mother, because if she seen, if she was to see me acting any other way than the, than the, the son that she raised, she would probably slap the mess out of me if I, if I was walking <laughs> around acting like I had some kind of ego. Uh, but uh, fortunately, fortunately, the the guys that I came up with, we were not egotistical people. We just loved music for the for the for the art form, and it wasn't yeah. about you know being flashy. It was about just supporting what the music is asking for. And also, when you start out in the music business, there's not too many people I know that didn't start out broke. Broke will keep you humble. No matter how much money you make, when, you, when you're at that point when you realize that every gig you have is a gift, you remain humble no matter who you're playing with. That's just my opinion. You know, I do know that there are some people that, you know, when you start playing with a certain level of uh, talent, that it somehow goes to their heads, you know. But I've never taken any gig or any job that I've done with anyone for granted for any reason whatsoever because I know every job that I do and every relationship that I make is a gift. Right. And I, I will never take that for granted. I don't care who I work with. Well, I love that. And I think, again, that's why people respect you so much. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome the one and only Ralph Roll to our program today. We're talking to Ralph not only about the extraordinary journey he's been able to be in in music, but also in life to be able to entertain as well as to educate. And now you're making us feel even better, Ralph, because of Soul Snacks Cookie Company. So I want to talk to you about that. I mean, <laughs> what, what was that like for you to be able to start a new chapter in your life with, with, with Soul Snacks? Well, the beginning of the cookies started um, kind of, okay, let's do this as a kid. I watched my grandmother bake. I watched my mother bake. And growing up in a household uh, with, without, a, like, a father figure, and I'm not saying this to be bad because my mother was both my mother and my father. She handled both jobs. It was tough to raise four kids 
you know, coming up in the Bronx, but somehow she she did it. So I just gravitated towards her education on every level. And one thing my mother did is everything that the girls did, the boys did too. So the girls could play sports and they were involved in a lot of sports. The boys learned how to do everything uh, that was supposed to be at the time traditional women's work, which is, was crazy. But, but I think you understand what I mean. Um, right. So I learned how to cook. I learned how to sew. I learned how to, to, to do all the things that were domestic skills in the house. And I, and I actually liked it. You know, uh, for a short time I was a shy kid. So when I got to that age when I wanted to meet girls, I didn't have a swag in my opinion. I was a nerdy kid who was into books and into, you know, just music and playing drums. So my way of introducing uh, myself to girls, if I met someone, I would bake something for them, like some cookies or a cupcake or whatever. And when they would get it, oh, that is so sweet. You're such a nice, oh, my. And that was my opening. That was my icebreaker. And wow. I I did that for for years until I got uh, to the point that I was comfortable enough to actually speak without a cookie in my hand. Uh, but years years later, after my um, my mother passed away, my production company and I started doing productions out of my house. And one day, my partners Gerard and Gerard Harmon and Armando Cologne, we were in the house, and I said, you know, I'm going to go make some cookies. And they were like, what are you talking about? you make cookies? I'm like, yeah, I make cookies. So I went and made the cookies. I brought them back into the studio. And from that point, it was like, okay, so no matter when we have a session, make sure these cookies are here. And that was just the, the comfort of now being able to make the product. And when my girlfriend moved in, we decided for the holidays that we wanted to um, make cookies for our friends and family. So we had 36 people on the list. You know, me being a, you know, beginning working musician, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So uh, we decided, I said, why don't we just make the cookies? And we did. We sent them out to everyone, and everyone got back and said, you got to start selling these. And that's what we did. And that's wow. how the, the company was actually born. In Bronx River Houses, one rack at a time in the oven, and then it's just kind of uh, the, the, the next part of the story is uh, I was doing an open mic at uh, Sylvia's, Sylvia's also, uh, and Melba, who owns Melba's Restaurant, was the uh, proprietor of the open mic. And I called Melba and I said, Mel, I got this idea. I want to sell cookies, and I'd like to launch them at the open mic. And I didn't get any pushback at all from them. She said, fine, bring them. So we were so ill-prepared, we didn't know what to do at that point. We had... I created a label on my computer. Um, from there, we took regular paper and took school glue and glued it on a brown paper bag. And then we put the cookies in a sandwich bag and put it inside the bag and scotch tape the label, the, the, the bag closed. Uh, and then uh, we gave out, we went to the club that night. Um, Shelby J., who was a singer, most people would know her from singing with Prince and D'Angelo. She's the girl with the bald head. She was actually the uh, the singer and the MC for the for the open mic. She announced the cookies. We gave out samples. We had about 20 bags or so, $5 each. We sold all the bags. And there was a guy sitting at the bar from YSB Magazine. And he tasted the cookies. He wanted to know more about me and my partner. And we were both from public housing. At the time, I had just got the job on Showtime at the Apollo on NBC. And she was a dancer that graduated from Juilliard. So he thought that was a special interest story that we both came out of public housing that had, wow. uh, you know, these amazing backgrounds. Uh, so being so ill-prepared, I didn't even have a number to give him. So I asked my sister, can I give uh, this gentleman her page number, one of those pin number pages? Right. So we gave him that. The mag he told me when the magazine article was going to come out. We thought we'd get maybe five or ten uh, calls about getting orders. Boy, was I wrong. We ended up getting ten calls a day for weeks, 20 calls a day, to the point that I had to move out of my apartment and move into uh, my, my uh, friend's uh, mother's brownstone across the street, and she let me turn wow. it into our first kitchen. And that's where we started the company, and from there, 
um, I got the bright idea to call a friend of mine uh, named uh, Andrew Ellaby has a company called Double Exposure. And I told him, and I didn't have any money. Um, I, so he said, listen, we've been friends forever. I'm going to stand behind you on this. And what Angelo did at that point changed the total direction of the cookie company. I ended up uh, in the New York Times. I was in all of the uh, urban magazines from the source uh, to um, uh, just so many others. And yeah. uh, then he got me on the uh, TV Food Network and NBC, ABC, Fox. Everybody started uh, calling. And um, the big one we got in the Family Circle magazine for their holiday issue. And from there, we we had so many cookies to sell at that point. It was amazing. Um, wow. Then my partner, my girlfriend, decided to leave the company. She didn't want to have anything to do with us, not leaving the cookies or me, my dogs, nothing. She just wanted wanted out, which was very uh, tough at the time. But yeah. I kept it going for as long as I could. I stopped the company, which I'm not someone to give up. I knew I was going to start again. And then I met my, my current wife, and we started the company back together the same way again, one rack at a time, and we had a baby. So it was now another – yeah, the, another, the other piece of the journey, we had a baby. Uh, um, I, I met my wife, and, and we just decided, why don't we start the cookies again? And we did. And my first client when we started back, oddly enough, was Melba. She was the first person I went to, and she brought us into her restaurant. And the second client was Dougie Fresh when Dougie had his uh, chicken and waffles restaurant. So, And from there, we just started selling to stores all around New York City, cafes, uh, restaurants, delis, hospitals, uh, all over uh, New York City. And then we ended up, uh, at that point, we got uh, a call to go to Japan, and I opened up a store there. So um, perseverance is important, in my opinion. What an amazing thing. And and now here you are. I was on your website, Ralph, and so the word is out. There's something big coming in April. You want to tell our audience what that is? <laughs> yes. Um, what I've learned to do is, is utilize um, the cookie as a calling card and social media. So there's a lot of content on social media about me, my music, and the cookies. And um, we were about to start a fundraising portion of the company that we're still doing. But at that same time of developing, I got someone called me and asked if I was interested in talking to a gentleman who had a lot of success in major uh, outlets. Uh, and I said, yes, I'll take any phone call. Let's talk about it. And the gentleman happened to be very, very successful. His name is Mario uh, De La Guardia. Mr. De La Guardia uh, asked if I was interested in talking about partnering with, with the, my cooking company and gave me some offers that were amazing. And one of those offers was that he had a relationship with Walmart, him and his partners. And would I be interested in having the cookies in Walmart. And obviously, you know, that didn't take long to make that decision. <laughs> um, so so uh, I said yes, and the ball started rolling on that, and we started developing uh, the, the product specifically for the Walmart stores and the larger outlets. And it, it took us about a, almost a year and three months. But I'm proud to say that today, two 18-wheelers full of our cookies left the baking facility for uh, for Walmart, and we will be in Walmart April first, twenty twenty two. Wow, amazing, amazing! Do you yeah. at this point, Ralph? Do you still have those wow moments? Was this another one of those wow moments for you as you kind of look at the different milestones in your in your life and, and career? I have wow moments all of the time. Um, I don't like I said. I personally do not take anything for granted as far as my music career, as far as the cookies, uh, because the passion part of both makes everything still feel brand new, like my first gig, like the first time I sold the cookie. And, you know, just any relationship that we we uh, happen to get 
uh, from the cookies has been amazing. Uh, during the pandemic, um, I had to figure out uh, a way to revamp uh, the direction of the company. So I, I just got the bright idea to put together a proposal and send it to uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. And not knowing if I was going to ever hear back from them because, listen, the failure is, is not finishing the thought. That's just how I've always been. So once I got the thought and I felt like it was something important to do, I put together a proposal and I sent it to Chase. And about two months later, they called me back and said, we got your proposal and we love it. Um, and I was like, really, this is incredible. I can't believe they actually, you know, looked through all of their emails, found this one, and want to work with Soul Snacks. So we bake cookies and send out cookies for J.P. Morgan Chase all across the United States, which is a really great thing. But the, the moral to the story is, you know, don't settle in to just thinking that it's it's another, you know, just day in the office because that's when you kind of get complacent. I think looking at everything as glass half full and very positive and, and forward motion moving will only get you out of bed to want to just live life and every 24 hours in the most positive way. So I am always wowed by any gig that comes my way. Anytime someone calls and says, you know, you're doing something uh, for an artist or you get a call to do a session or a movie soundtrack, I'm still like, whoa, this is incredible. You know, the, the first time that I met uh, Paul Simon, I bought, I, his drummer, his name is Steve Gadd, who is someone I, I admire, and I, I can actually say I know now, but he he played on the track 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, which is an iconic song. And I actually had a chance to play that in front of a live audience with Mr. Paul Simon. So, wow. yeah, wow. wow. So, I, I, yeah, I'm always wild, you know, even at this point in my life. I'm, I'm just yeah. excited about everything, every day. So what is your hope then, Ralph? I mean, as people look at what you've done, the success in music, the success in being able to inspire and motivate, and now success as an entrepreneur, what is your message to others about the importance not only of the dream, the dream is important, but working for the dream? Um, the first thing that I would say is this. If you find something to be your passion, just remember that passion has no expiration date. If it's truly your passion, it, it will be something that you will constantly try to go after. And, and success is not based on how much money you make. It's based on finishing the thought. Finish the thought. Put a, put a, 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 a period on. So, for example, if I'm selling cookies, and I pack the cookies, and I go out, and someone likes the product, and I actually packed it and gave it to them, I consider myself now successful because I finished the thought of getting that product into someone else's hands. The residual of that finishing of a thought is the possibility that you could gain monetary uh, rewards from from that passion, from that thought. But I, I see a lot of times when people change direction uh, in, in what they're doing, and I've always had the feeling like, well, that wasn't really a passion. That was just something you were thinking about. You know, I mean, I had my cookie company for 26 years, and I'm getting into Walmart now. Yeah. And I'm, at, do I have any regrets about that? Not a single one. Not a single regret do I have about the fact that it's, it, it's 26 years later. Because if it wasn't for the journey, it would not be a teachable moment for other people, for my you know, my community, uh, other bakers, other business people, for my family. You know, it's it's sometimes that journey is necessary and important, you know, and if you stay on that path and, and keep moving forward and learning from your mistakes, you will eventually get to that point. You know, there are some people out there that have shown me many times that, you just have to keep going after it. I heard Michael Jordan talk about how many times he's been handed the ball to, 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 to make that game-winning shot, and he's missed. But that didn't make him stop playing basketball. You know, I, I know Steve Harvey, and Steve Harvey talks about 
when he became a comedian, he was willing to die for that choice. He slept in his car. He didn't have any money. And then, you know, he got a phone call. The next thing he knows, he's on a, a, a plane heading to New York to be the host of Showtime at the Apollo because someone seen him doing stand-up on the Internet. So the point is, follow your passion to the point that you have no more breath in your body because that's what passion is about. Passion is about living and living for your dreams and trying to move those dreams forward because you never know who's watching you. You never know who you're inspiring. Such a great message, and you have definitely inspired so many. Again, everyone, Ralph Roll has been our guest. His first appearance here on Conversations Live and also for other outlets, talking about his journey, what it's been like for him to do the work and to see the work paying off, especially with another big milestone coming just this year in the middle of everything else that's going on in April 2022, uh, being a part of of Walmart, um, the, the largest retailers. Truly amazing. So, Ralph, so excited for you, so excited to help spread the word. How can our audience stay connected with you? Um, you can follow me on all social media under uh, Soul Snacks. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, soulsnacks.com, um, or you can uh, just hit me up or at any time uh, with an email. You can send it to uh, uh, ralph at ralphroll.com. That's ralph at r-a-l-p-h-r-o-l-l-e.com. Well, Ralph, thank you again for the time. Really do appreciate it. And looking forward to our next conversation together. Thank you so much. Glad to have you. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>